Um, I had a talk this morning and I, I gave a disclaimer in advance, a warning that I never practiced the timing of the talk. Um, this time it's worse. I didn't practice the timing of the talk. Um, also, I'm not the main presenter, actually. Uh, the main presenter um, it could have been Rubio or Anna, also on the list. They couldn't be here, unfortunately, so I'm doing it in their name. Um, but I think I can answer most of the questions. Um, by the way, the first talk was, well, it was very nice within the time, so I believe this will be fine as well. Okay, 3D tiles in Mapbox GL. Um, who knows Mapbox GL? That's about what I expected. Who knows 3D tiles? It's a bit less. Who worked with 3D tiles? Okay, still a sizable amount. Um, I'll get a bit into details halfway. Um, first, I, I think this, this is just, I, I, I copy pasted from the website. Uh, Mapbox. What's Mapbox? It's a JavaScript library that is able to render with WebGL, which is uh, incredibly fast in the browser, and you can use vector tiles and Mapbox styles. Um, now these vector tiles are are great. That makes it go very fast, uh, and you can do really cool things with it. And now, now this is the thing I didn't practice, and I hope it works well. Yeah, it opens on my screen here, of course. Yeah, okay. See, I should have practiced. Um, now, this is just a sample of what you can do with, uh, it's a very quick mock-up what you can do with vector tiles in, in Mapbox. You see buildings are taken in as 2D geometries, but you can extrude them very quickly. Uh, you can color them based on some, some properties, and when you hoof over them, you see that the, the properties of every, every object are, are, are shown here. That goes lightning fast. And you can do uh, amazing amounts of data in, in, in one go, depending on how fast the network on my hotspot is at the moment. Okay, that's cool. But this is not really 3D, uh, what you're looking at. This is actually 2.5D. It's just buildings extruded from the, from the um, bottom. And yeah, this works. Another example of what you can do with it. Is it this? Um, this is actually um, uh, vector tiles uh, combined with another data set, which was hopefully loading. Well, what you should have seen is roads, um, where the traffic is actually moving on the roads. And the nice thing is you can, in WebGL, you can pretty quickly render amazing amounts of data. Oh, here it comes. And if you zoom in a little, i just click a random one, is that you see that actually all of these lines are moving. This is the actual traffic in the Netherlands currently. Uh, not much happening, as you can see, since it's not red. Uh, and it's the actual speed the cars are driving. So this is an amazing thing you can do with WebGL. Um, this would not be possible in, in, in any um, uh, technology in the browser. Um, but we wanted to do a little bit more. And that has to do with real 3D objects. This is a small example I copy-pasted from somewhere. This is an example where I can use 3GS. 3GS is um, uh, also a render engine in the browser uh, that can handle any 3D objects, including shading. So it works pretty nice. Um, but you can only do one object at a time, and it takes quite a lot of resources because you load all the data in your browsers, and then you have to start rendering it. So. Does it do 3D tiles in Mapbox? No, it doesn't. That's obviously the answer. Um, what are 3D tiles anyway? Now, 3D tiles are a standard, and uh, not long time ago um, uh, formalized by the OGC. Um, it's a pretty complex standard. That's my opinion. Um, it takes a while until you understand the, the workings of it. Um, but once you get a hold of it, and once you can use it in your, your software, your viewers, uh, you're quite easily able to draw in lots and lots of data, which is real 3D data. This is to, to show the effect of what a 3D tile is. Every white block you see is a tile. And what you're used to with normal tiles is that they're nicely next to each other, and every time you zoom in or zoom out, you get to do a different tiling scheme. 
This is a bit different. You see the tiles are inside each other. And it depends a bit on how many entities there are in your tile, whether how big it will be. OK, this is, this is not Mapbox. This is Cesium. But this is where I wanted to go. Cesium is obviously, since the, the, the authors of Cesium also authored the 3D tile spec, uh, this 3D tiles in Cesium, which works pretty well. Uh, I didn't zoom out to the whole city, but you can you render the whole country if you like, if your memory can hold it. Um, and it has a, a nice shader. Uh, so this is the, the idea of what we wanted to reach in, in Mapbox as well. Now the question is, did we get that? And I think that should be, uh, yeah, on my next slide. I'm a bit stuck. I'm trying to cancel my presentation. Yeah. OK, this is the real thing. So this is actually Mapbox, what you're looking at, the Mapbox environment. And it has 3D tiles in it now, um, which would theoretically enable me to, to load the whole world if it was put in 3D tiles. Um, it is pretty conservative currently, because you see the buildings disappearing once I zoom out. Uh, but when you zoom in to, for instance, this area in Amsterdam, you start seeing the houses appear. It goes relatively quick, the loading, uh, actually quicker than, than cesium, probably also because it's more conservative in uh, throwing away houses. And it has no terrain, which is an important feature. So, uh, so yeah, with a relatively small library, which you can download, you can add this on top of your Mapbox maps, and then you have the ability to do 3D tiles. Now, how do you do that? By the way, how am I doing in the time? Oh, perfect, perfect. OK, how to do that yourself? Uh, first of all, you need to have some um, 3D polygons, um, which are not very difficult to come by if you look a bit around on the internet. Many city councils or provinces are, are distributing some kind of, of 3D data. You can load that in your Postgres, PostGIS database. Uh, it will usually be automatically converted into polyhedrals, and polyhedrals is the basis of our 3D tiles. Uh, you use OGR to OGR for that. Uh, don't forget to add dimensionality of three, otherwise you end up still with 2D geometries. A little uh, caveat that we didn't think of, um, it is a different projection than normal in Mapbox. Mapbox is using Web Mercator, uh, which is not used for handling 3D, not that often. Uh, so, which means the houses were rather suppressed when we loaded them the first time. The scaling was not good in the height. Uh, actually, it depends on what latitude you are on Earth, what happens with the scaling. Uh, if you would be, I guess, on the equator, it would be normal. If you're on the pole, it will be completely flat. So, you have to add a bit of scaling depending on your latitude. By the way, who knows SQL? Okay, I'm safe. Um, as well, you have to put it all on the on the floor, of course, on the how do you say ground level? You say on ground level because Mapbox doesn't do terrain; it needs to be on on, on zero sea level. So that's a, that's a little translation you have to make. Um, for the sake of of being able to handle with it, um, there is already a nice library called Py 3D Tiles to to put your geometries into 3D tiles. Um, we wrote our own to be able to do a little bit more with it which you can download from, uh, from there. And basically what it does, it reads a whole database with um, polyhedrals and puts them nicely in your 3D tiles. And it even uses, and that's a nice part, you can add colors to it. So if you have an attribute in your column which says this building should be red or green or whatever, it assigns that color. If you do it per polygon in your building, so your building consists of triangles, if you give the right index, you can color every triangle separately, which means your roofs can have a different color than your, your walls. Oh, a little caveat, this is time. It, it's not very quick, as you can see. Now, the results of that, 
you, you publish somewhere on the internet. Um, as long as you can reach it with the browser, then you can, uh, can open your three details. You get the code, you add it to your map box, your standard map box viewer, and you add those lines. You just need 3S, obviously, because we're using 3S to render it. Uh, you need uh, some converter and the, the library itself. And then it works like this, you just edit, and then you would get the output that you just saw. Which is this, if you take the um, example we put online. Uh, this is fairly easy. Uh, it's also, it, it's not much different than the extru extruded roofs because they're all flat, as you can see here. Uh, but believe me, you can also do any kind of geometry. And what's nice, you can add points to it. It also handles point clouds. That is to say, the viewer handles point clouds, not the Tyler. Okay, I'm almost done. We're going pretty quick, actually. Uh, where do we want to go from here? Um, what well, would be really nice if somehow we can add this terrain to to the Mapbox viewer, uh, so we have height. Uh, you can do several ways of adding the height. You can make 3D tiles out of it, which would be a bit waste of resources, maybe. Uh, use quantized mesh. Uh, we're still looking into that. It would be nice if you can properly texture your houses, like if you can plot photos on it or something else. Um, and what is really lacking currently is you can't click on the buildings. And I think that's the main feature you need. You want to, in the end, click on your objects and you want to know what's, what's in them. So that needs to be added. Ah, and then we're all on the last slide. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed that, but uh, basically, what was the motivation behind this? Because if cesium can render 3D tiles well, and then why, why, why bother, uh, impor uh, why bother rendering them in in, in Mapbox GL? Is the motivation performance, or is it something else? Thanks so much for this question. I just now noticed I, I missed that slide. I didn't put it in. Yeah. Why would you even put the effort into it in the Mapbox? One, you said uh, performance is an issue. I think Mapbox, because it just it's a bit more simple than, than all the, the um, bells and whistles you have in Cesium. It just performs better without doing too many tweaks. Two, uh, it's easier to implement for the average user. It, it takes a while before you have Cesium running as you want it. Uh, it is just that lines of code you saw to get it in Mapbox running. So. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, do you have any estimations for the roadmap for the textures, adding for those kind of things? It depends on the funding, of course. <laughs> 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 and no, no, to be honest, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's a joke. Um, I think first priority is to make it clickable. Uh, I, I think that's most useful for ourselves, at least. The textures, I don't know. It will be experimental. I'm not even sure if it will really work out nice. It, it's a bit experimental. Okay, thank you very much. Somebody else? Oh, sorry, didn't see you. Thank you. Uh, the question is that, probably not the question, maybe you know, because Mapbox has uh, created a working group to create a new specification for the vector tiles with support in 3D. It's, it was like in April 2018. And I'm not sure if they, like, created something or not, maybe you got some insights or you were in this working group, etc. So the question was, do you know if uh, Mapbox itself are going to implement the 3D into their vector tile specification? Thanks. No, it can be very short. I was not aware of any implementation of 3D in, uh, in vector tiles, no. Th though I looked for it, so it must be a bit hidden. Okay, some other questions, because we still have more time. <laughs> So for, for this work, do, do you rely on a specific functionality from Mapbox GL? I mean, is there a custom layer that you can, that you leverage or something for for being able to implement this? How, see my point? 
Yeah. This was too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure from what I, I, I didn't write the code myself. From what I've seen from it, um, no, it's not a custom layer from um, Mapbox. Um, uh, what it does, it does use the tiling, for the, um, I'm really digging now in my memory. Um, I don't think it's a custom layer. If you open up source code, you'll see quick enough. I'm quite sure it's not very much. But um, I think the answer is no, it's not a custom layer. Because my, under, my underlying question was, would you have the same like, endpoint for being able to implement the clickable uh, functionality? Because maybe you, ne you need some mechanism from Mapbox.gl to be able to m implement it. Yeah, a good I question. I'm, I just, I'm just guessing. I think the issue is more in the 3D tiles themselves that they d are lacking the information still. The, the way we build them, there is no um, feature information the way it should be done. You need to use um, batched geometries in 3D tiles. We're not using that. Uh, so that's why it's lacking. Somebody else? Okay, so thank you very much. Tom Van Tilburg. Thank you.